All right, now we're actually gonna open up a section of the plugin that hasn't been visible up to this point. So if you go down to the bottom right and you click on the settings menu, we've actually got some really, really important parameters that we wanna consider at this point. Going over here to the global parameters, we have transpose. So if you're familiar with composition at all or writing music, transposition is just where you're altering the pitches of the song. Okay, you're gonna move them up, down, change key, uh, and so if you open this up, uh, we can actually change it by one or two octaves in either direction. I'm going to leave that alone because I've got my pitches exactly where I want them and I don't want to move them up or down. The tune knob down here is going to be something similar but on the level of synths. Okay, so remember synths are just one one hundredth of a semitone or note value. The reason you might want to use this, uh, unless you're just kind of going for a detuned effect, is you might want to balance out a change that you made earlier in the oscillator section. Okay, now remember, we boosted that second shape up eight cents. So we have shape one at perfect pitch, and we have shape two eight cents above. Okay, now that might seem fine. It might seem like we're still playing that pure note uh, just with a little bit of difference, but we're focused on that main note. You're actually hearing the value in the middle. That's what you're perceiving. So. We're actually hearing the note four cents above our shape one pitch. So you can counter that down here in the tune section of the global settings. You can move that down four cents. So now both of our shapes are four cents away from center, meaning that we're perceiving that center note. This bend setting at the bottom of the global controls has everything to do with the pitch bend wheel, uh, if you have that on your synth controller. And it allows you to bend up or down a certain number of semitones. So if you raise your pitch bend to the max, at this point you'd only be raising it two semitones, uh, but you can raise it all the way up to two octaves if you want. So if you wanted to raise a whole octave whenever you push that wheel up or down, uh, go down an octave, that's where you should set it. Polyphony is probably one of the most important things to consider here uh, because Polyphony has everything to do with the number of voices that you're allowed to play at one time uh, when you're using this synth. So we have a harmony here. I'm playing three notes at a time each time I play a new chord. So I really only need three voices. Okay, but I don't really want to limit myself. Who knows what we're going to do with it in the future. So you may as well set it to the max value, 16 voices. If you have a melody line, you might want to set it up here to mono. Okay, you might think, well, why limit myself? Here's a reason. If you're playing a melody line, you're actually performing it on your synth keyboard, and you're playing, you know, several notes relatively fast, you might overlap a few of them. Okay, you might ha not have the <laughs> most clean playing style. Uh, so you're actually going to run into some dissonance, probably. If you're playing a melody line, and you accidentally overlap two notes right next to each other, it's not going to sound the prettiest in that moment. But mono... Uh, will make it so that after you play that second note, and even if you overlapped it with the first, it's going to immediately go to that second note. It's going to cut that first one off cleanly. Finally, legato is a form of mono. However, um, all of these notes have their own volume envelope. Okay, They get loud, and then they quiet down. And in mono, each time you press a new note, that volume envelope starts over. Okay, so you get the attack of each note each time it's played. In legato, if two notes are connected right next to each other when you play them, it's actually going to share the volume envelope between them. So you're not going to get the attack for each note. That volume is going to decay as you play through your melody. Let's listen to an example of mono and legato using a melody example that we've pre-recorded. Here's mono. And here's legato. If you attempted to use mono or legato with a harmony, so something with more than one voice, it's only going to take the top one. Okay, so notice I'm going to have this in mono. And just listen how we're only getting one note every single time a new chord plays. So 
let's go ahead and set that back to 16 as we're going to continue using the harmony for these examples. Now we have voice detune. Okay, so now that's just another way to start separating both of these oscillator shapes using their pitch. Okay, so you don't want to take this too far, you know, or else your harmony is not really going to blend well with the rest of your song. But if you kind of slightly raise this, you're going to start noticing these shapes pull apart just a tiny bit. Take a listen. Now we have stereo spread, and this is something to consider if you know you want either a mono signal or a very wide stereo signal with some width. So if you have it set to zero, you're going to have a completely mono signal. Take a listen to this. And now here's a fully stereo signal. I'm going to use a full stereo spread as I have a lot of movement in this synth and I want to be sure that movement can carry left to right. All right, so that we're not having the same signal on both sides just creating one mono signal, but we've actually created a lot of space and movement within that space. Finally, you can actually double up the voices used for shape one and two. Okay, originally you just have uh, an oscillator for shape one and an oscillator for shape two. Well, you can unison them both so you can add two voices on top, four voices, and eight. So each time you're adding an extra voice for each shape. Let's listen to how it affects the sound. So for me, in this case, it was really just adding some low end uh, buildup that I really don't want. So I'm gonna keep that unison down to two voices. Uh, but in a different case, you might really want uh, there to be more strength to your sound and you might want to unison more of those voices. Finally, these settings to the right are going to impact how your MIDI controller uh, can alter certain values. Okay, so over here, uh, your mod wheel can control a variety of different parameters. Right now, it's controlling the filter cutoff. Okay, so that's, remember, your cutoff rate up here in your filter can be modulated with your modulation wheel. And you can affect the amount or effect of that modulation as you scroll that to the right. We can also affect the pulse width of our square wave. Remember how we can affect the pulse width of our square wave. You can impact that with your mod wheel as well as your LFO rate. And later on, we're going to discuss a vibrato rate as well. You can also use things like aftertouch. So remember that's pushing down on your keys after you've already played the note. Uh, to affect various parameters, the same ones as before, and velocity, so how hard you strike the note on your MIDI controller.